Right you guys, got another video here for you on creating a persistent uh, live Nomad BSD USB drive. Now I've created uh, persistent drives before and uh, someone asked me to take a look at Nomad BSD. So I thought I'd show you how to do it. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do. This is the uh, website here. I'll leave all the links in the video description. But basically it's a pretty nice uh, OS which you can use on a USB flash drive. It's based on free BSD and uh, it's a pretty nice bit of kit. Once you get it all set up, you can use your USB flash drive to do whatever you like, and it will save all that information on the drive itself. So if you're out and about on the go and you just want to boot up to an OS system and you want to work on it and save that data, then the Nomad BSD is a pretty good choice. You can get the uh, download from their website. I'll leave the link in the video description for you. You are going to need a few bits of software and I'll show you what you're going to need to create your persistent live Nomad BSD USB drive. Now again, uh, you will need a super fast uh, USB flash drive to get the benefit from this. Uh, we're also going to be using uh, Etcher. Now Etcher is a free piece of software you can use to create your bootable USB flash drive with your Nomad BSD on there. And also you're going to need 7-zip to unpack uh, the actual image file uh, from that uh, file you've downloaded from the uh, Nomad BSD website. So you can install all of these software and you should be uh, pretty much good to go from there. So here we have our software. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and click on this and get 7-zip installed first so we can unpack uh, that file there and pull out the image file which is inside here. So you can see this file here. You won't be able to use this as is, so just go to 7-zip here and extract here. This will then extract the image file from inside that zip file, which makes it uh, usable. Next up, we're going to be uh, installing Etcher, and Etcher's a pretty nice bit of software for creating your bootable drive, and uh, if you want to use other software, you can, but we're just going to install uh, Etcher here. And once we get this installed, it's pretty self-explanatory from there. Plug in your USB flash drive that you want to use. Again, I'll leave some links in the video descriptions for some super fast USB drives that you might want to purchase and use for this particular task because you will need a fast one uh, to make it more enjoyable. So first off, what we're going to do here is select the image. So click on select image and this will allow you to select uh, the Nomad BSD image. Next up, select your USB flash drive, pretty simple stuff, hit the blue button and select your USB flash drive. You should see a little green tick over the right hand side here and then we can click on uh, start which will start the whole process and you can now click flash. Flash will get the process started, attention, it's going to format your USB flash drive and start getting this prepared for you. So just bear that in mind. If you've got any data on that USB flash drive, you will lose it. It will format that drive and start to prepare uh, Nomad BSD on there for us so we can then boot up uh, to that USB flash drive. I'll speed this process up as to not to bore you to tears because it does take a good while to get this uh, ready. So let me speed this process up here and it just validate the drive here to make sure everything has gone okay. That does take a bit of time, so do be patient. Once that's complete, you should see flash complete and successfully uh, completed. So we can then move on to the next stage, which is rebooting the system into uh, the BIOS. Now to get into the BIOS, you may have to push F2 or the delete key to get in there to make changes. You're going to want to start to disable secure boot and make sure uh, that is disabled. I'm running legacy on this one so I can boot to that drive and I've also got CSM support enabled and I've got secure boot disabled and also we're running on legacy only here which should boot up to that USB flash drive and work just fine. If you've got a secure boot enabled and stuff like that it's not going to work so you do need to uh, disable that for this uh, sort of tutorial here which I'm showing you. So once we've got this done we can then push F10 and that will save those features and then we can boot up to our USB flash drive and continue with the building process because we're not done just yet. Select your USB flash drive right here uh, as you can see we don't want the UEFI version, we're just going to select the version which is going to work for us and then start to boot up to our uh, Nomad BSD. You can see here we're going to select option one and uh, this will start to load up. 
Now this does take a fair bit of time, so you've just got to be a little bit patient uh, for this to boot up and load in, because we still need to prepare the actual drive first by giving it some language, keyboard layout, and all that sort of good stuff. So just let all that go through and let that load up, and then we'll continue uh, with the uh, build process, and then we'll be able to boot back up to it, and it should be good to go. So you can see it's now uh, mounting at that image for us. So this does take a bit of time. So I'm going to leave auto detect uh, done for the graphics driver and push enter and we should now be able to set up our um, USB flash drive. So I'm going to choose uh, my language here, which is United Kingdom. There's a bunch of different other languages there you can choose from. but I'm just going to choose my one, which is United Kingdom here. I'm going to choose next here to move on to the next stage. This will get the uh, USB flash drive ready for booting up to uh, with that operating system on there. Keyboard layout, again, I'm choosing uh, United Kingdom, uh, which is English United Kingdom. There's a bunch of other ones on there. If you wish to uh, choose yours, you can do. Just test your keyboard to make sure it's working okay in that little bo test box down below, and then click on Next to keep moving on. So we're gonna go Next here. And once we click Next, uh, we can move on to uh, the area where we live and that's Europe London so I'm just going to click next now we need to give it a password for that account this is for your root uh, password so make sure that you put a decent password in there now the user account will be nomad as you can see listed up the top there so just make sure you've got that set right and then you can click on next and move on to the next stage you can encrypt the drive if you wish uh, if that's what you want to do, you can put an encryption on there and also put your password on for it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. Again, you can mess around here and choose whatever you like, i.e. for shell editor or GUI editor or file manager. There's a bunch of them to choose from there. You've got bash and also a bunch of other ones on here. Editor is on the easy editor at the moment, but if you wish to change that to something like Vim or something like that, you can do whatever you want to do, really. Choose which one you uh, want to use. I'm just going to leave that on the easy editor and leave it on the uh, leaf pad here and leave that on the bottom selection there as well. Probably change that shell back to the default and uh, we'll go from there. So let me just put this back to fish. So I'm just going to drop this down and we'll go back to fish, which is the friendly interactive shell. You can choose whatever you want you want. Once you've got your selected, you can go to next and you can check the settings here to make sure they're exactly what you want to do and then click on the commit button. Once you click com commit, this will move on uh, to the next stage. It will then start to get all your drive ready and it'll get things set up for you. It does take a little bit of time to finalize the drive to make sure it's all working correctly. And once this is done, we can then reboot and uh, then boot to our drive for the first time. And then hopefully once we get there, we will be at the desktop of that USB flash drive and you can do whatever you like from there. You can surf the web, you can open up uh, image files, save those files and they will be saved on there so next time you boot back up they will be there okay just make sure you shut it down uh, correctly before you close this uh, usb flash drive down otherwise you could end up with a corrupt drive so you don't want to be doing that so it's just now going to create the file system on that drive for us as you can see here it's copying all those files over that does take a bit of time so i'll speed this process up as so you don't get bored and now we can uh, boot back up to that usb flash drive so let me just go ahead and quickly boot up here and uh, this does take a bit of time again so just bear bear with it let it boot up now of course if you've got a really fast USB flash drive at this stage this is going to work really well so again I'll quickly speed this up and get into the uh, desktop here so I'm going to auto detect my graphics driver here if you're having problems use the one below uh, that and try that method there but it should work and you should get to the desktop very quickly here. So you might see a little white screen and then it will go uh, to the actual desktop. There we go. That's what we're expecting to see. And there we are at the uh, desktop. You should wait for the logos to load in and also the bar at the top, which is your taskbar up there. Just let that load in. It does take a bit of time. And there we are. We're up there now. So we can see 
the icons here. Now you can make changes to this if you wish. You can do some customization to it. You've got your audio here we can mess around with. So you can customize it to your own liking. It's entirely up to you whether you want to go ahead and do that. Personally, I'm just going to be using this as is. I have no reason to change it. You've got your browser here. You've got a bunch of other things like your email client so you can receive emails and all that sort of good stuff on here. And uh, it's a pretty nice bit of kit. It's a really decent operating system for something that you want to use on the fly. So if you're out and about and you want to get access to, say, for instance, uh, an Internet connection, you can set it up here. There is uh, capabilities of Wi-Fi connection here. I'm running on Ethernet and you can see it works OK. And again, you've got Gimpony and a bunch of other programs on this USB flash drive as well. They've also got a right click feature on the desktop, which gives you access to a bunch of programs as well. So if you right click on the desktop, you'll see a list of programs come up here and you can see this is where you can um, use your programs and also access your network settings and a bunch of other things like that as well. So it's very useful to set up if you've got a spare USB flash drive lying around where you want to have a little play. So anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. Hope this one's been useful to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. Thanks again for watching, guys, and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank <laughs> you.